If you have ever used a computer or phone before, you probably have done something like asking Siri to flip a coin, searching for a random word or number generator, and of course, in most programming languages, you can get random numbers with less than a line of code. But computers are really just a bunch of wires that can do math. So where does the randomness come from? They can't choose a number arbitrarily. Everything they spit out has to be the result of some calculation, right? If you want real randomness, the only way is to get it from the outside world meaning things like mouse position on screen, CPU load, current battery, atmospheric noise, or some quantum property. All of these things are relatively unpredictable. This feels like cheating, doesn't it? But really, it is impossible to get an actual random number using some equation, because random numbers are by definition unpredictable, so generating numbers according to some algorithm breaks that rule. Computers can only generate what's called pseudo-random numbers, which basically means stuff that's not actually random but looks random enough so that it's fine for most situations. Pseudo-random number generators have the advantage that they can often be very fast, and most importantly, you can use the fact that they are predictable to your advantage. Every time a program executes, the same number can be outputted. Making one of these is actually surprisingly simple. One method is called a linear congruential generator. Basically, you pick a starting number, the seed, and then multiply it by a number a, add a number c to it, and then divide the result by a number m, and take the remainder of that division. This remainder operation is also called a modulus. Now, take the new number and put it in place of the seed, plug it into the same function, and repeat. After you do this a few times, the output looks random and has no clear pattern. If you have the same seed, it's going to give you the same sequence every time, because all the numbers that come after it depends only on the variables and the seed. This can be great because you can get the same sequence without storing each and every number. But if you want a different sequence, you have to change the seed. And the only way to get a random seed is to use real random numbers and borrow them from the outside world using physics weirdness, not math. With this method of generating pseudo-random numbers, because the output depends only on the previous situation, if it gives you the same output again, it's stuck in a loop. In fact, no matter what numbers you use for A, C, and M, they will all loop eventually, because there's only so many different numbers that it can output. You can pick good numbers for A, C, and M, which will take a very long time before they repeat. The length of this loop is also called the period length. You can make the period length larger by making the c's and the variables larger, giving you physically more numbers that can possibly be outputted. If the output is between 1 and 10, it's guaranteed to repeat in less than 10 steps. But if that number is bigger, it will take longer to hit the same number twice. There's also a bit of tinkering to give you numbers that happen to work well. But this doesn't mean that if you want small numbers, you are doomed to have a short period length. What you can do is use the same large numbers, but only show the last digit, for example. This way, even if it seems like it hit the same number twice, it still wouldn't loop. Now, let's look at a more robust algorithm called XOR shift. It works similarly to the previous algorithm, where you start with the seed, which completely determines the output of the algorithm. The seed is then converted to base2, or binary, which is conveniently how computers store numbers. Each of these digits is also called a bit. Let's assign x to this binary number. Now we can make a copy of this number, and we shift each of the digits to the left, filling up the gap with zeros, and just chopping off the bits that stuck out of the other side. In this case, we're shifting it 13 bits to the left. Then we can compare the original number and the shifted number and do a bitwise XOR. You essentially compare each number digit by digit, or bit by bit, and write down a new number. If both digits are the same, write a 0. If they're different, write down a 1. Now, you can see why it's called XOR shift. Just for good measure, we're going to do this a few more times. Let's assign x to a new number, make a copy, and shift it to the right this time, by 17 bits, and do the XOR operation and assign x to it. Now for the last time, we're going to make another copy, shift to the left again, this time by 5 bits, and do the XOR operation. This final number is the output of the XOR algorithm. Also, here's some pseudocode for people who can learn better that way. Just like the previous algorithm, we can do this as many times as we want, and end up with numbers that look fairly random. These numbers for bit shifting are picked specifically to have a very long period length. So, to summarize, in this video you learn about how computers can generate these pseudo-random numbers, which are basically sequences that look random but are actually predictable and has a well-defined way of generating the next number. We also looked at two specific implementations of these pseudo-random number generators, linear congruential generators and x shift. More importantly, we looked at what's in common between all of these algorithms, the seed, which determines everything, and how to get a long period length so the algorithm doesn't loop as easily. 
If you learned something today, then please like the video and subscribe so you can see more videos I make. And thanks for watching.